Hello everyone, it's Elena and I'm back with another video and today I'm doing a massive book haul because this Friday I got to live every bookworm's dream because my mom's partner took me to Munich and as a gift he paid the bills in all the bookstores that we went to and I literally have no self-control when it comes to bookstores so this was a pretty big gift. So thank you so much to him and let's see which books I got. Let's start with the fantasy books. I got the Ash Princess series, Ash Princess, Lady Smoke and Amber Queen. This is about a princess whose family is murdered and she's then held as a prisoner by the new ruler and she ends up having to save her people. It's I think a pretty standard YA fantasy hero story but it has really good reviews and you guys also recommended it to me a lot and that's why I decided to get the entire series. Next we have a spontaneous buy which in all honesty I had never heard of before I saw it in a bookstore. It's called Heartless. This is the German version. If there is an English one available I will link it with all the other books in the description box below. And this intrigued me because of the text on the back because it said she has to steal the heart of the prince and I was like oh okay she has to make him fall in love with her and then it's like literally. And I was like wait what? So basically she has to take out his heart um, and to fulfill her task she enters a competition to become his bride because she somehow has to get close to him but then feelings get into the mix and you know the question is will she be able to do it in the end. And I was intrigued so that's why I bought the first book but this is also a series but since I had never heard of it before I only bought the first one because I want to see whether it's actually any good. Next up we have this collection of books and these are all part of the Red Queen series. I already own the first book in the series and it's dystopian fiction. It's about a society which is divided by blood. So you either have red blood or silver blood and if you have silver blood you have special powers. And the people with silver blood are the ruling elite. And the main character basically has very special powers and she even has the ability to bring down this entire regime. And that's what she's trying to do while simultaneously being in the middle of the silver blooded ruling elite. And I actually haven't read the first book of the series either but it is the monthly read of my book club um, so I will definitely be reading it this month and I just have a feeling that I'm gonna like the series. It is also very well reviewed and I just didn't want to you know finish it and then not have the other books to continue the series because that's what happened to me when I was reading A Court of Thorns and Roses and honestly that was not a great experience so that's why I got all of these books. And lastly we have this book which is called On der Ozean war unser Himmel or if you translate it that literally it would be And the Ocean Was Our Sky and this is about whales which are fighting humans and when they're attacking a group of humans they instead find evidence of a monster which um, has been reported on in legends and which is maybe even the devil himself, at least that's what it says on the back um, of the book. And honestly I was intrigued by that and I want to know more. I have no idea about this book, like I had never heard of it until I saw it in a bookstore. It is also illustrated, um, so that's what some of these illustrations look like. And yeah, I'm gonna see whether I like it. I also bought one crime book which is this one, When the Stars Go Dark. It's about a missing persons detective who's put on a case of a young girl who's gone missing and the case has a lot of similarities to a case from her childhood and from the reviews I've gathered that this is as much about solving the case as it is also about the inner life of the detective. So you know figuring out whom she can trust and figuring out what she can learn from her past and yeah you know also asking yourself are you standing in your own way when it comes to solving this case, stuff like that. And I don't read a lot of crime, but every once in a while I do like a good crime book. So I'm excited to give this one a read. From crime to politics, and if you're basing your opinion on politics on House of Cards, then these categories are basically the same. But yeah, let's go. First up we have eating animals, should we stop? I'm not a vegetarian, but I don't eat a lot of meat. And um, honestly, I haven't really looked into this topic a lot, like from a philosophical or moral aspect. Um, and when I saw this title I was intrigued and that's why I picked it up. Next we have Power and the People, Five Lessons from the Birthplace of Democracy and this book looks at Athenian democracy and what went well and what didn't go so well there and what we can learn from that for our own modern democracies. And in all honesty I don't know a lot about Athenian democracy so I think I'm also gonna get a bit of historical knowledge from this and yeah let's see what lessons the authors draw from the history of democracy. Next we have Voices of History, Speeches That Changed the World and honestly I picked this up because every once in a while I read a paper or a book chapter and people make a reference to a famous speech and they just assume that you know the context of that speech because it's so famous and I just don't. Um, so I'm trying to get a bit more knowledge on things like 
you know, famous speeches and stuff because I tend to just not get the reference. So I'm hoping that this is gonna help me a bit. Next we have this book, which is called Die Kunst Recht zu haben. So it's about remaining the person who's right in an argument. So this contains some tips and tricks for arguing your case in a debate. And I mean, as a law student, I was naturally interested in this. Next we have another historical read, which also looks pretty historical, which is this one, Sternstunden der Menschheit, or Decisive Moments in History. And this contains miniatures about events that changed the world. And I actually didn't even know what this book was about when I first saw it in the bookstore because it doesn't have any text on the back. So then I quickly googled it and I decided I'm gonna pick it up. Um, it sounds interesting to, you know, read about events that changed the world. And also this book is just giving me really cool vibes. I don't think I can dog ear the pages here. Like I normally dog ear the pages in all my books because I just lose bookmarks, so instead I jog the pages and that is my way of marking which page I'm on. I know this makes me Satan in the eyes of some, but I like doing it, so I will continue doing it. But it kind of feels like a violation with this book because it looks so old, um, so I might have to get a bookmark just to not jog the pages here. Next up we have these four novels. So the first one is The Little Red Chairs, and here I was just intrigued by the text on the back. So it reads, when a man who calls himself a faith healer arrives in a small west coast Irish village, the community is soon under the spell of this charismatic stranger from the Balkans. One woman in particular becomes enthralled in a fatal attraction that leads to unimaginable consequences. And your girl wants to know what these unimaginable consequences are, so that's why I got the book. Next up we have Hamnet, and this is a fictional account of the last days of Shakespeare's son Hamnet, who died very young. And on the text on the back, it starts with his twin sister becoming suddenly ill, and him looking for help because his parents are away, and no one knows that it's actually Hamnet who's not going to survive the week. There's also a theory that Shakespeare's play Hamlet was named after Hamnet, since these two names were basically interchangeable at the time. Um, but in all honesty, I didn't even know about Hamnet, the son of Shakespeare, until I saw this book in the bookstore. But now I'm intrigued. Then we have a tale for the time being. Here a woman finds a lunchbox after a tsunami and that box also contains the diary of a young girl. And in that diary the girl writes about her heartbreaks, her hopes, everything that's going on in her life and this complete stranger is reading about it and of course it also affects you when you are getting to know someone like that even though it's just through a diary. And that's basically what this book is about. I also picked up this book which is called The Dunkle Wächter. I believe in English it's called The Watcher in the Shadows. And I picked this up for two reasons. Firstly, the story sounded really interesting. So it's about a man who's basically all alone except for these machine humans that he built to keep himself company. But then a family enters his life and with their arrival a secret from his past comes up that then threatens the life of the family. And that whole setup just sounded really interesting and I want to know how it's all going to play out in the story. And then the second reason for picking up this book was the author. Because I've read quite a few books from him and honestly all of them were really good. So I think this is also going to be a great read. Next I have some biographies and the first one is Big Sister, Little Sister, Red Sister. And this is about three women who shaped 20th century China. And I have no idea who recommended this to me but I do remember that one of my friends basically gave me a 10 minute monologue about why this book is amazing and that's why I had to pick it up when I saw it in the bookstore. Next we have Empire of Pain and not gonna lie I was hoping that this is a fantasy book when I pulled it out of the shelf because Empire of Pain would be such a good title for a fantasy series but no this is a biography. Um, however the text on the back did get me interested and so I decided to bring it home nonetheless. And it's about the Sackler family and their involvement in the opioid crisis because they own a pharmaceutical company which sold a drug um, which was very addictive and this explores how you know the family actually ended up selling that drug um, and it basically traces the history over three generations of the family and also you know what legal tactics were used in order to be able to continue selling it and overall this seems like a really detailed account but I am also quite interested to find out how exactly this actually happened because I have heard the name Sackler in a few news articles but I don't really know a lot of the history behind it, so that's why I decided to get this book. And then we also have The Ungrateful Refugee. And this title got me worried, not gonna lie. I was like, is this some super right-wing dude's manifesto of why he hates refugees? But no, this is actually written by a refugee and it talks about the refugee experience. So what is it like to be a refugee? And as someone who has always lived in very safe countries, I obviously have zero experience with that. 
but I think it's really important to educate yourself on things like that in order to better understand how you can help and also just to be more empathetic and that's why I decided to get this book. I also picked up some classics and I got all of these in the Reclam format. I don't really know if Reclam is a thing outside Germany but they make these tiny books. They're always pretty small and they are printed on very fine paper so it's probably not the highest quality book but they're great when you're on a budget and I love that they also fit into basically every handbag because they're so small. And the first one that I bought is Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. I bought it because I read The Crucible from Arthur Miller and I absolutely loved it, so I think I'm gonna like this one as well. Next, I bought this collection of fairy tales and I was intrigued by the title and that's why I decided I'm gonna buy it because it is called Das Kalte Herz und andere Märchen, so The Cold Heart and Other Fairy Tales and I wanna know more about that cold heart. And then lastly, we have Give a Boy a Gun, which is about school shootings and the motives behind it. And I also realized that on the English text, Reclam actually gives you an indication of which language level you need, which I think is really useful when you're an English learner. So for example, for Give a Boy a Gun, they are rating this at a B2 level. And then for Death of a Salesman, they say that this is appropriate for B2 to C1 level. So if you're learning English at the moment, I think this can be really helpful when you're trying to figure out whether a book is already at your language level or whether it might be too difficult. And now we're getting to the last three books, which are short stories and novellas. And the first one that we have here is The Murders in the Rue Morgue and Other Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. And with Edgar Allan Poe, sometimes I really love his writing and other times it's just a bit above my intellectual abilities, or at least that's what it feels like. Um, now here on the back it said that these stories contain horror, madness, violence, and the dark forces hidden in humanity. And that was enough to intrigue me. Next we have Tales of Unease, and these are tales of mystery and the supernatural. And it says that um, the author has an imagination for the strange, the grotesque, and the frightening, and that all of that comes out in these stories. So we're gonna see, the back text doesn't really give a lot away in terms of what these stories will be about, um, but it was enough to make me wanna read it. And lastly we have At the Mountains of Madness, and this cover is really simple but also very effective in my opinion, I think this is a really beautiful book. And this is about an expedition which has gone wrong because they end up discovering a lost alien civilization. And basically they are waking some things that really shouldn't be woken because they're pretty dangerous. Now, I'm not really sure how all of this is going to fit into this relatively small book, um, but we're going to see. Um, I was interested by the text in the back and um, given it's a pretty short read, I think it's pretty doable and something that I could easily take with me during the summer, you know, when I'm on the train, just, you know, always put it in my bag. Um, so yeah, that's the last book. And that's it for this book haul. If you guys are interested in any of the books that I mentioned, I'm going to link all of them in the description box below. And if you want to know what stores we went to in Munich and whether I think they are good, you can check out my Instagram story highlight summer 21 and there you can find all of the information. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day. Bye!